I appreciate you uh, taking the time to do this. I'm just kind of curious. Uh, most guys, uh, the week of the NFL draft, can tell stories of a whirlwind that they've been through, visiting teams and all that kind of stuff. What has it been like for you since a lot of that stuff has been uh, postponed or canceled during the last two months? Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, it's been a crazy time. Um, you know, it's crazy for everybody right now. You know, luckily I've been able to – I'm home with my family right now. Um, I'm able to – I mean, this is time I've almost never had with them. You know, my dad's home, my sisters are here. Uh, so that's really exciting. But, yeah, so all those pre-draft visits or anything like that, any workouts, they're all just online Zoom meetings now. So whatever in-person thing you would have had, it's now on Zoom. Hold on a second, Andrew. Go ahead. As a follow-up, how much of an advantage do you have maybe over some other guys because of your father, because of what he does, and he could share a lot of those uh, experiences with you that maybe you would have had, and also just kind of help you in how you deal with teams uh, mm -hmm. from the distance that you are. Definitely. You know, he's been great. Uh, I mean, I'm so lucky to kind of have him as a role model and somebody to bounce questions off of because, you know, he's – he's every day he's on zoom meeting with players so he tells me like what he likes what how i should be presenting myself all that type of stuff so you know it's great where you at greg there we go go ahead greg barnes charlie thanks for joining us kind of walk me through a, a typical uh, session with the team that maybe you're you're having a conversation with mm -hmm. is that just a, an interview do they ask you to do anything more maybe break down film anything of, of that nature yeah definitely so i mean they all vary you know some's just getting to know you just seeing how you are how you fit in their room with their guys you know other ones get a little more in depth some will be showing your own film so unc film just kind of me talking through it see how just kind of my thought process during our game and others, they'll be taking me through their own install and seeing how I can pick up their stuff and just seeing how much info I can retain and kind of spit back at them. Go ahead, Greg. Does, does Brian Hess or maybe your personal trainer play a role in this with you not being able to physically work out for teams to answer questions or provide uh, stats or information? Uh, you know, I, I was grateful that I was uh, I was able to go to the Combine. You know, I was really looking forward to uh, UNC Pro Day um, just to kind of help out some of those numbers. But, but, you know, luckily I was able to get a lot of exposure there and at some of the bowl games I went to. Um, so I was really grateful for that. Um, other than that, just with the training process, you know, my, my brother was home for a few days too, so he was putting me through some good workouts. But uh, other than that, no, I've been I've been really lucky. Good, Greg. Good, thank you. Jonathan, go ahead. Okay, hey Charlie, I'm just wondering how what was it like? I guess uh, or how did it affect not having your pro day? How did it affect you? Uh, I mean, you know, I, it didn't happen. So, you know, it's a crazy time for everybody. So, you know, it's time to just get on, not really dwell on the past. But, you know, it was something I was looking forward to, you know, um, just being back at UNC, seeing all the guys, seeing the coaches, you know, get to uh, get to go see some UNC spring practices. You know, I, I was really looking forward to that. But also that's just a time you really can have some one-on-one -on -one time with NFL coaches. And, um so, I mean, all over, that's a lot of players have been affected with that, not being able to actually have that one-on-one -on -one time with with coaches. So now that's why they're going to these Zoom meetings. How have you tried to um, create an advantage um, uh, seeing that you, don't have, that you don't have that pro day to help your cause? Like, in what ways have you tried to, to help your cause in, in getting a higher draft? Yeah, you know, I mean, right now it just comes to – the reality of it is I'm going to end up getting some type of opportunity with some type of team. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, when or where, where that is, but I'm going to have an opportunity, and that just comes down to being a football player. And once you're in camp, there's, there's no more uh, what do you run the 40 and how many bench reps did he get. It's about 
it's about being a football player. So right now I'm, I'm just training on being the best football player that I can be. Going to Luke. Hey, Charlie. Just love for you to describe kind of your emotions and feelings when you get to look back on the season and in your career, UNC, how you kind of went from those two years of, you know, two, two and a lot, the bad records to then getting to be seven and six and kind of setting up this new, you know, wave of Carolina football. You see the recruits come in and there's this momentum that you, you got to build, but you're not going to get to live out. I'd love to kind of hear your thoughts of like, of what goes through your head when you kind of think back on your career and where it's going? I mean, I have this huge sense of pride, and I have so many other players do that were in my senior class and on the team now. I mean, it's so—I mean, it's so special, especially for us seniors to have the that tough two years and then able to get us in the direction where we wanted to do, and that was our goal. And now, just to see all the new things going on in Chapel Hill right now with the new. Uh, new facilities, all that. I mean, it's so exciting. You know, I wish I could be there five more years, but, you know, I'm excited to visit as much as I can and do whatever I can to help out. Charlie, we're happy to put you in disguise if you want to stick around. <laughs> no, I'd love to. Yeah, you know, it's, I was, I was, yeah, you know, it's, it's going to be really fun. Anything further, Luke? No, uh, that's it. Thanks, Charlie. Mm -hmm. Brett, I'm coming over to you. Hold on a second. Right. Got to get you unmuted here. There we go. All right. Charlie, do you have any specific plans for uh, for watching the draft? I mean, are you going to be paying attention right from the beginning, uh, or are you going to be doing something to kind of keep yourself busy away from it until you get the phone call? Yeah, you know, it, it's definitely – it's just going to be my family at my house. Um, it's just going to be a low-key. We're just – not much stress. Just TV will be on. I'll have my phone near me, but we're just going to be going about as business as usual in my house, uh, just kind of keeping low stress and just just exciting for whatever opportunity comes. Indication have you been given to uh, you know to start paying attention and being near the phone as to when, which day? Yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, it's not going to be the first day. I'm not going to sugarcoat that, but you know, any. Second or third day, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna start getting perked up a little bit and have have my phone near me for whenever. Ross, go ahead. Uh, hey, hey, Charlie. Um, what's the goal, guys? Oh, yeah, I was kind of along the same lines. Um, a lot of the questions have been asked before, but. What um what have you seen in terms of UNC's recruiting recently and the changes with that and then I'm gonna follow up on that so kind of answer that. Sorry, I, I just missed kind of the last thing you said there. What have you seen with, with UNC's program? You mentioned kind of the upward trajectory mm -hmm. that you all got with the seven and six season. What have you seen any changes with recruiting and why you think the recruiting is, is taking an uptick recently with Mac Brown, the new staff? Yeah. So I mean, I was actually just having this conversation with one of my friends, you know, I mean UNC is a place where people want to go to. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful campus, amazing academics. And now that we have the football program in the right direction, I mean, there's, it's a no-brainer, I mean, for everybody. I mean, I could see if we're only winning three games why some kids are going to not want to go there. But, I mean, it's, we got the coolest uniforms. We got amazing facilities, best academics. I mean, so, I mean, it's a no-brainer for recruits coming there. I mean, you're going to win. You're going to have an amazing experience. And once you're done with college, you're going to be set for the real world. Charlie, I'll send you that 20 bucks on that one here in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Right there. Uh, and then I, I covered your recruitment. I mean, you were uh, tied in. You were like 250 pounds and unranked when you committed yeah. to UNC. What's it? Did you ever think back to kind of where you were as a high school senior to where you are now, just physically and also the chance to – to get drafted and play in the NFL. What's that kind of like when you think back to that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a dream come true. And I mean, I like I really couldn't have done it without UNC and kind of the sports staff, all the coaches early on, and then the coaching staff now. I mean, just kind of people believing in me, just my, my roommates, my teammates, you know, it all just came down to a work ethic. And I mean, it's something that I'm proud of to look back on, just kind of my journey. 
And uh, so, I mean, it's really exciting that um, hopefully I'll be able to have an opportunity to go out there and make a team now and continue playing football. On to you, cruise control. Yeah, sorry. That's what happens when you have a fiance who owns your computer on the weekends. Sorry. Uh, anyway, Charlie, so uh, I know you've been essentially off campus all of 2020. You know, you had the senior bowl, you had the NFL combine. Just curious as to kind of in the last six weeks or so, how much ad-libbing or deviation you've had to do in terms of your workouts, where you've gotten to work out, where you had something planned and you had to maybe move someplace else. Yeah, definitely. So, um, up into the combine, I was training at Exos in uh, Carlsbad, California. Um, and then after the combine, my plan was just to train at UNC with uh, the strength staff there up until pro day. And then pretty much stay in shape there until pretty much right now up until the draft. Um, so obviously that's changed. So I've been pretty much since the combine, I've been home in Kansas City now. And uh Luckily, my brother came here for a week or two, and he was able to put me through some good workouts. Um, now it's lucky. Luckily, I'm able. I have some good equipment down in our basement, so I've been able to, you know, stay in shape. But and there's a there's an empty field I'm able to go to and just work on actual football drills and staying in football shape. So I think I've made the most of it. Um, obviously, it's an unfortunate time, but uh, people are just making the most of what they've got. Anything further, Jared? No, good deal. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Luke, go ahead. Charlie, I was kind of want to ask a question away from away from football. So mm -hmm. with the quarantine, in effect, grocery stores are limited. I kind of want to get an idea about the household when you have, you know, you, you, your brother and your dad. Like, what is that like food-wise? Are you guys just stocking up every day? Describe that process. Yeah, you know, we have our designated uh, grocery shopper who will go into Costco and just get a lot of good food because you're right. I mean, it's a it's a big household that we've got to feed. Um, Everybody is staying safe. We're cleaning things. But uh, yeah, we've got we have to eat. And, uh, you know, I'm really thankful that I'm home right now and able to uh, have my parents kind of provide that for me right now, because I know if I was alone right now, it would be tough sledding for sure. How how often are those trips to the grocery store? Shoot, I, I, I think we've kept it down to maybe one every two weeks or once a week. We've been pretty good. Cool. Hey, Luke. Jonathan, go ahead. Uh, Charlie, I was just wondering, have you thought about what it might be like to hear your name and, and maybe even your teammate, Jason Strobridge, name called? And, and, and what does that thought look like? Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's been a dream of mine since I can remember to play in the NFL. And, uh, you know, if I hear my name called and Shro's name and any other UNC teammates, you know, I'm going to feel this huge sense of pride and joy. I mean, you know, it's because it's something we've worked for. But like I said, at the, end, at the end of the day, you know, it's about just making the most of an opportunity because, I mean, a lot of these UNC players and myself, we're going to have an opportunity to go out there and make a team. And then you're going to be the same player no matter what round or when you get picked up. So you still got to go out there, you know, earn the respect of the team and make the most of it. Thank you. Good, Jonathan. Yes, thank you. Alyssa, go ahead. Yeah, Charlie, have you had any contact with Coach Brown? And does he have any, you know, words of wisdom for you during this time? And I'm sure he's your biggest advocate. Oh, yeah. I mean, Coach Brown's meant the world to me. You know, he's between all the bowl games, you know, the Shrine Bowl, Senior Bowl, Combine, he would always send us, you know, nice text. He's kind of cheering us on, just telling us that he's in our corner. Uh, no matter what, uh, he's always there for us. And, you know, that's something special about Coach Brown because, you know, he really means it. And I know right now if I had any trouble, I could pick up the phone, call him, and he would, he would be willing to sit down and talk to me as long as I want. And, uh, you know, that's really special about Coach Brown. Anything else, Alyssa? Good. Thank you. Good. I'm going to unmute you, JB. You got me? Yep. 
All right, here we go. Hey, Charlie, thanks for uh, taking out time for us, man. We really appreciate it. I want to go back to that pride you were just uh, displaying about, you know, Chapel Hill in North Carolina and just the future and the recruiting. Um, curious to know if you watched the documentary on Michael Jordan and, you know, just being a Tar Heel, maybe the conversation amongst you and fellow teammates, fellow Tar Heels, whatever it may be, as far as like the pride that comes off of a documentary, like someone who went to school at North Carolina and maybe how that'll have an impact on, you know, even more better recruiting for you guys moving forward. Yeah. So I actually don't want to hear any spoilers right now. I recorded those, those two episodes last night and I was actually right after this, I was about to go sit down and watch them, you know, so I'm really excited for that. Uh, I've been hearing, seeing tweets about it, Instagram posts about it. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Bob, go ahead. Hey, Charlie. What, without the pro day, what were the highlights for you from the combine? Um, how did, what was your, you know, your, your take on how that went for you? Oh, you know, it was great. I mean, you know, the main thing, which re what's really good about it there is you really get to meet with a lot of coaches, a lot of scouts. They get to kind of see who you are as a person. And, you know, I think that really comes down to being the most important thing there because they're looking to see if this guy will fit in their type of room, how he'll be with their team. And, you know, that it was cool to make those connections and talk ball with uh, different coaches. So that was probably my favorite part for sure. So did you walk away with with good feeling about how that went for you? Absolutely. It was, it was a great experience. Yep. Great. Thank you. Pat, go ahead. Hey, Charlie. Just uh, growing up, just kind of how big of an event was draft day in your household? And are there any sort of memories that kind of stick out from those drafts growing up? Oh, yeah. I mean, because so, I mean, wherever my dad was coaching, our family was diehard fans of that team. And so, you know, there was a lot, a lot of stressful draft days, uh, just kind of mainly just for me, because I was just a diehard fan of whatever team. So I, I had my I had some strong opinions about whoever they drafted. But obviously, I, I had no say in the matter. Uh, but it, it was always fun kind of hearing my dad's opinion after the uh, those three days. Anything further, Pat? I guess, I mean, I think you were only two when your dad retired from the NFL, but just kind mm -hmm. of. Over the years, just how much more appreciation have you gained just for the career that he had and just kind of especially going through this process now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really have gotten a much bigger appreciation, you know, as I've continued to play football and gotten older because, I mean, when I was really young, I was like, yeah, my dad played in the NFL. But then as I get older to realize, you know, he was a first round pick, played for 12 years in the NFL. I mean, that's that's almost unheard of for an offensive lineman to be able to land 12 years in the NFL. So it, it's, it's really cool to kind of see that, hear that from him and just kind of hoping that I can follow in his footsteps. Um, big, big shoes to fill, but you know, it's, it's been a dream of mine to hopefully one day be able to do that. Thanks, Charlie. And go ahead. Charlie, have you and your, your dad ever talked about what it might be like if the Chiefs gave you an opportunity to make a team? Yeah, um, I think my dad, my dad and I would handle it totally well. I, I think it would cause a lot of stress for my mom. Um, so he's always said that'll be my mom's decision if it ever comes to that. Um, but, you know, it, it would be exciting to eventually one day hopefully play for him. Uh, that'd be cool. But I'm going to be happy wherever I end up going. Cool. Uh, we went through everybody who's raised a hand. Everybody good? Cool. Well, Charlie, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate you doing this. Everybody here is rooting for you. Um, and, and go out and have a have a stress-free week, I guess. Yeah, exactly. All right. Thanks so much. <laughs> yep.